I want to speak to you about the end. If you need a sign for something, it means that thing is not obvious. When it does happen, a lot of people will be left behind. A lot of people will miss the last trumpet because it's not going to be obvious that the trumpet is about to sound. Bible gives us signs to know, but the specific day and the specific hour, nobody knows, it's, it's a toss up. But the period or the season that is going to happen, oh, it's definitely revealed. Every single prophecy that has to do with the rapture has already been fulfilled. We are looking for the rapture. There is the tribulation. There is the mid-tribulation, the end of tribulation, and then the reign of the Lord Jesus for a thousand years, where the devil will be tied up for a thousand years and we will reign with Christ for a thousand years. And then Megiddo is going to happen. The reality is if your husband and your wife and the husband prays and has a stronger relationship with Jesus and the wife also prays but she's not as close to the Lord, in reality they won't be in the same place. If you go to Israel right now, is the temple together or is it undone? The construction of the temple will happen when the Antichrist steps in. Mm -hmm. Isaiah prophesies about Israel will come back into its land, they will be rebuild the city, they will rebuild what was broken. Scholars were thinking for some time that in 1948 it will be when the rapture will happen. But that wasn't actually accurate because remember again, no one knows that day or the time, but we can know the season. The biggest sign is to look at what is happening in Israel. In 2048, Israel will be turning 100 years old. I am not saying the world is ending at 2048. I'm just making you aware of certain things that you need to know as a Christian to understand when the coming of the Lord is. Our time is extremely short. Lord Jesus said, on that day, for that day, the specific day of the rapture and the time, no one knows. Our Lord Jesus said, for that day and hour, no one knows. But he did not say that we will not know the season. So it's ignorant for somebody to live thinking that no one knows the day. It means that you don't know if it is around the corner or when it is about to happen. I wish somebody could understand this. The Lord Jesus said, no one knows the day or the hour. That day has been hidden from mankind, but the season is revealed to man. That is why Jesus gave us signs to know. That is why the Lord Jesus gave us signs to know. The Bible gives us signs to know, but the specific day and the specific hour, nobody knows, it's, it's a toss up. But the period or the season that is going to happen, oh, it's definitely revealed. Amen. Amen. In the ancient days, people could know when it was about to be summer. People could know when it's about to be winter. People could know when it's about to be the rainy season. They could tell what season was coming by what was happening in nature. There is no sign we are waiting for that says that Jesus is coming. I'll tell you this. The rapture, every single prophecy that has to do with the rapture has already been fulfilled. Remember, there are three periods that we are looking out for. We are looking for the rapture. There is the tribulation. There is the mid-tribulation, the end of tribulation, and then the reign of the Lord Jesus for a thousand years, where the devil will be tied up for a thousand years and we will reign with Christ for a thousand years. And then, uh, uh, what is it called? and then Megiddo is going to happen, yes. and then the end will come. Even the time that we'll be in heaven is revealed. Mm. It's true. When the rapture will happen, the time is revealed. I, I wish somebody could understand this. Be so here, there are yeah. things you need to be aware of, and why you need to be aware of. The reason why you need to know this is because there are things that are about to happen. There are things that are about to come. Mm. And if you're not aware, you're going to miss what God is doing. Mm. So we don't want to be those people that are not preparing for what is to come. You don't prepare for a journey on the same day you prepare before. Mm -hmm. You see, there's a lot of Christians that are not ready for the spiritual realm or the heavenly life or the life of the spirit beyond this flesh. And anyone who doesn't, there are consequences for it. It's not just about going to heaven or to go to hell. 
even heavens there are dimensions within heaven that you will live in it depending on your spiritual development on earth so if you skipped reading the Bible on earth, don't think that because you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that when you enter into glory, you will go to the highest heaven. No, you go to the lowest heaven and you have to build your way up. Come on. I'm going to say that again. That's really you will have good. to build your way up. Ask yourself this question. If Apostle Paul was a great man, which he was, Apostle Paul was a mighty man. But when he had a heavenly encounter, he only went to the third heaven. You imagine somebody like Apostle Paul, one of the greatest apostles that ever lived. When he had a heavenly experience, he was only allowed to go to the third heaven. Mm. He could not go beyond the third heaven. Anyone that has gone to heaven and has seen heaven looking like the earth, they're in the lower heavens. When you go to the higher heavens, there is no human words to describe that place on earth. You see, Apostle Paul went to the third heaven and he said that things that I saw and what I heard is not lawful for a man to speak on earth. He already transcended it to higher heavens that what you see there is not even what is on earth. When you go into the heavenly realm and you go into heaven, I'm not talking about the spiritual realm, I'm talking about heaven itself. Whenever you are in heaven and you see heaven looking so much like earth, know that you are in the lower heavens. So what we are talking about is to strengthen you, is to build you, is to teach you, so that you can develop a strong relationship with the Lord Jesus. Draw close to Jesus. So that by the time you're transitioning, you are in the high heavens. To be honest with you, there are some people that when we, when we are caught up with the Lord, or when our time comes, you will be surprised. You will see some people you thought were very powerful in, in, on earth. They are in the lower heavens. Wow. That for you to go and visit them, you need to, to, you know, there are these things called stations in heaven that you lower like... Uh, uh, angelic beings or human beings that are in the high heavens if they come to the lower heavens with their glory they make it uncomfortable for the others because of the amount of light they carry wow. so they have to go through a station whereby their glory is kind of dimmed for them to be able to be with the guys in the lower realms wow. and they go into those lower realms to help them develop so that they can go to the higher realms reach to where God is so getting to God's throne is not like something easy the way people think Wow. The reality is, if your husband and your wife, and the husband prays and has a stronger relationship with Jesus, and the wife also prays but she's not as close to the Lord, in reality they won't be in the same place. They will not be separated, but they will not be in the same place. Mm -hmm. Because one would have been promoted to high heavens, and the other one would not. Obviously the husband or the wife will come to the lower heavens continually to help them develop in revelation and the knowledge of God for them to go higher. Wow. These are secrets that you don't know unless you have entered the spiritual realm. They are hinted upon in the scriptures, but unless you have the eyes of the spirit to see, you will not know. Peach. When Jesus was talking about little children, he says, these little children in heaven, their angels see the face of the Father, meaning not everybody sees the face of the Father. Some people do, some people don't, even though they are in heaven. So anyone who takes their spiritual life on earth lightly, just think about it. Just because you come and visit, just if you come, if you are never close to me and you come visit me, it doesn't mean we'll be best friends. It's common sense, right? Mm -hmm. It's true. So how do you think just because you said Jesus is Lord and Savior and you make it to heaven, it means you are closer to Jesus. It doesn't work like that. There are levels and dimensions. And how do we know that? Even if you look on earth, you look at the means of operation, how the Spirit of God works with people and uses people, it is different. Why is it different if we are all loved by God? I'm not saying we're not loved by God, but why are we graced differently? Number one, it's because He's a sovereign God, He's a loving God, and He does what He wants. Number two, it's because of relationship. Number two, relationship. Whoever is close, Jesus, the Bible literally says this, draw close to me, and I will show you things that you do not know of. So there are people in the place where they know things that others don't know, and there are people who are in places where they have common knowledge and there are other people who are in secret knowledge. Mm -hmm. So if you're not close, there are things you miss out. Amen. If your prayer is five minutes, <laughs> if you don't fast, you don't read the word of God, you're not developing in your love for Jesus. You think you'll be close to him. No, he loves you. He will grace you, but he will grace you according to where you are. Come on. Some of you will still go to Bible school in heaven. 
Matthew chapter 24 from verse 1. He's talking about the destruction of the temple. So Jesus is saying that, can't you guys see that one day there will be no stone in this building left unturned? If you go to Israel right now, is the temple together or is it undone? It's undone. Remember, the construction of the temple will come up. Huh? The construction of the temple will happen when the Antichrist steps in. Mm -hmm. They will rebuild the temple. So right now it's in ruins. People go there, it's being cleaned, but the stones are, <laughs> they, are they have collapsed. So what did his disciples say? Listen to this. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, uh -huh. the disciples came unto him privately, uh -huh. saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? What is that generation? is the question. Mm. What is Jesus talking about this generation? This is the thing that you need to think about. Mm. Because that is the main sign. He's pointing to a certain generation that these things are going to take place. Mm. He's talking about a certain generation. Because remember, Israel was scattered. They were no longer at home. None of them were at home for a long time until 1948. Until 1948, Israel became a state again. They became a nation again. So this is the biggest clue that I want you to have. <laughs> this, is, this is the main one. In 1948, Israel became a nation again. 1948. Oh. Jesus is talking about the generation that will be there when the temple would have been messed up. Not rebuilt. Mm -hmm. There are some walls that are stuck. It will be in ruins pretty much. Mm -hmm. There's still the wailing wall that people go to pray to and stuff, but the, the temple is in ruin. Mm -hmm. So Jesus in the beginning spoke about that generation and then he went, continued about it towards the end. Mm -hmm. He said that generation that will see these things, what things, what I told you about what will happen to this building not being here, mm -hmm. and it will be desolate. It will be broken up. But it will still, structure will be here, but it will be, the stones will be turned over, meaning it will be broken. Mm -hmm. That generation is going to see me coming. That generation will not pass. But if you think about it, in 1948 is when Israel became a nation. Mm -hmm. So there are people, there are scholars who are studying, they were thinking that the moment Israel becomes a nation mm -hmm. is when the rapture is going to happen. But that's not what Jesus said. Because if you read the book of Isaiah, I believe Isaiah 60, if I'm not wrong, Jesus speaks, uh, uh, Isaiah prophesies about uh, how, how Israel will come back into its land, they will be rebuild the city, they will rebuild uh, uh, the city, they will rebuild what was broken, uh, uh, they, will, they, will, uh, they will prosper again and all those things. That is what Isaiah said, and that is what we are living in right now. Israel is doing really well. They have enemies around them, but Israel is doing very well. Technology is coming from Israel. Military, uh, your apps on your phone, if you love ways, it's coming from Israel. A lot of the things that we are using are all Israeli, probably 90% of it. Hmm. Agriculture is crazy in Israel, even though it's a desert. It's crazy. Everything that Isaiah spoke about, it's literally happening in our very eyes. Hmm. Mm -hmm. They will be returned into their seat, into their nation. They will rebuild old desolations. They will redo all these things. Are there some chaos here and there? Yes. Outside, but not within them. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing now. So we are living in that time where two people are going to the field. <laughs> mm -hmm. Meaning they are back home. Mm -hmm. So scholars were thinking for some time, that in 1948 it will be when the rapture will happen. But that wasn't actually accurate because remember again, no one knows that day or the time, mm -hmm. but we can know the season, we can know when it is around the corner. In 1948, most of the things that Jesus spoke had not happened yet. Mm -hmm. That is when they were coming home. Nothing was rebuilt, nothing was put together. That's when they came back home. So our biggest sign is to look at what is happening in Israel. Mm -hmm. That's one of the signs mm -hmm. we have to pay attention to. Now watch this. Jesus told them, I will be with you even to the end of the age. Amen. A generation 
is, is, is about 100 years, 60 mm -hmm. to 100 years, if we should say that. Mm -hmm. It's 60 to 100 years. To be honest with you, this is me saying, I'm not telling you the day or the hour. Please don't say Prophet Lovi said this or say that. I want you to pay attention to what I'm saying. In 2048, Israel will be turning 100 years old. Hmm. I am not saying the world is ending at 2048. I am just making you aware of certain things that you need to know as a Christian to understand when the coming of the Lord is. What is the period for you to always be in preparation? Amen. And me saying that in 2048, saying that Israel will turn 100, doesn't mean that is when the Lord is coming. Come on. What I'm telling you, what I'm trying to tell you is that it can happen at any time, any second. Amen. It can happen at any second. <laughs> he is literally at the door. But there is a twist to it also. There is a twist to it. That is when Israel is turning 100 years old. Okay? And uh, I, I want you to think about this. Assuming our calendar is correct, which is not. Our calendar is not right, by the way, for those who don't know. Our calendar is kind of off. Because we are assuming that the Lord Jesus was born at 0 BC. Right? Mm -hmm. But in reality, the Lord Jesus was born between 4 and 6 BC. He wasn't born at 0 BC. It's between, six, between 4 to 6 years for that. Our, is it called George, Georgian? Gregorian. 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 Gregorian calendar. It's a little, it's not the most, it's kind of accurate, but it's off with a few years. But let's assume that the Lord Jesus was born maybe BC, BC or 6, 4, right? Let's say 6 years. Let's be a little maximum. It means that you need to remove that 6 years out of the 2048 to subtract the time. Mm -hmm. So that drops it to 2042. Remember, I am not telling you when Jesus is coming. I am not telling you when Jesus is coming. I'm just telling you that the season and the time is much closer than we think. And why is it important for us to know why it is close? I will tell you after I tell you the next thing. So that is, uh, we are at 2040 what? 42. Yeah. If you want to be even more easy with the whole math, take out the seven years of tribulation. Because remember, the rapture, whenever the rapture is going to happen, there will be seven years of tribulation before, before the 1,000 years of the reign of the Lord Jesus. So if you subtract seven, what does that leave us with? 2035. 2035. About 2035, let's say 2035, 2036. Let's say around there. So in reality, we probably don't have more than 17, 10 to 17 years. I mean, what I'm saying is, I'm not saying that's when Jesus is coming. Remember, nobody knows the day or the hour. Nobody knows the day or the hour. Mm -hmm. But we can look at what is happening in the world and know that it's very, very close. Mm -hmm. My God. So don't think about the 2048 or 2042 or 2036 is the time that Jesus is coming. That's not what I'm telling you. I am simply saying that that may be the maximum time we have. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 What This we say unto you mm -hmm. by the word of the Lord, uh -huh. that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Mm -hmm. Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, mm -hmm. with the voice of the archangel, mm -hmm. and with the trump of God, mm -hmm. and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Mm -hmm. That's Remember, the Lord Jesus is not going to step on the ground when the rapture is happening. Mm. When, he, when the archangels will shout, people will be caught up. The dead will be taken, will be taken and will disappear and then will come back. Seven years of tri tribulation. It actually says in verse 17, uh -huh. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds uh, yeah. to meet the Lord in the air. Uh -huh. And so we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Yeah, that's because we'll be caught up. Yeah. We'll be caught up, we'll be raptured. Yes. And when we'll be raptured, there will be seven years of tribulations, meaning we'll be only in heaven for seven years. <laughs> Come back on the earth. California will still be there. <laughs> it will still be there. Nothing is going anywhere. Until when the end comes, when God folds all this reality into eternity. Anyone who knows Pastor Chris Oyakilome, that's our father. Uh, in fact, the, the right thing to say is Papa Chris, 
Oya Kilome, that's a father, father in the faith. He's, he's, he's one of the fathers for sure. He doesn't even think we have more than 10 years. He thinks the maximum is 10 years. He thinks, he's not saying that that's when, he's saying by the way things are looking, mm -hmm. the rapture may not be more than, within the span of 10 years it's happening. Meaning it can happen right now, it can happen 10 minutes from now. I, I may think it may be a little longer, but our time is extremely short. Our time is extremely short. Hmm. Our time is extremely short. Oh man. Hmm. Because when there's calamity, people pray too much. Hmm. Oh. People will be seeking God. Rabba Kabaya. Rebe Debe Debe. People will be praying. People want to be holy. People will forget. People, people will, you know, but when there is trouble, people remember to pray. Come on. Because remember, when the, the, the master of the wedding comes, is when everybody is asleep. Yes. Meaning people are enjoying. He won't come as a thief when everybody is happy. When everybody is sad, people are frowning, just sitting around looking to God. No, you will come at the moment you are the most comfortable, where you feel good. It is much closer than anybody thinks. We are literally, he's literally at the door. He's about to open the door and people are taken. So the question is, are you prepared? And how do you prove your preparation? This message doesn't mean sell your things and go and be a hermit. No. If they remember what he said, when the master comes back, shall he find his servants working? Shall he find them ready? Shall he found, find them doing things? This is the hour that you need to work for God more than you have ever worked because this time counts more than any other time. No. This is not the time that you relax. This is not the time that you, you hang out. Mm. This is the time to serve your purpose before God because there are things that you will gain in heaven that you will not have another chance to gain again. Mm. Amen. It's not the time for the mark of the beast yet. It's close. This is the time to do things for Jesus like you have never done before. If you have never won souls, this is the time to do it. If you have never contributed to anything that God is doing, the house of God, maybe helping a ministry, serving in a ministry, this is the time to do it. Amen. This is not the time to play games. I'll say it again. This is the time to do it. This is not the time to play games because yeah. it is much closer than we think. Remember, Pastor Chris said not more than 10 years. Mm -hmm. I think we have maybe 16, 17 years, if maximum. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that's when it's going to happen. I'm saying by the look of things. The point of this whole thing is time is really short. And if he finds you not doing anything, he will leave you behind. Mm. Not just because you said, Lord Jesus, your Lord and Savior. Be engaged in what God is doing. Amen. Super, super close. Acts chapter 10, verse 4. Amen. Acts 10. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy alms are come up for a memorial before God. Let me tell you what happened. When Cornelius was doing the... Cornelius did not know God. He just wanted God so bad. He started supporting ministries around. Started doing so much good. The Bible says that an angel appeared to him and said, um, your prayer and your giving, your arms, have come up for a memorial before God. If you, if you understand the Greek, a memorial before God, it's actually saying that a building appeared before God. There was a structure that appeared before God, that God could not see through and asked, who is this? Who is doing this? The angel said, there's a guy called Cornelius in the earth. He's doing dangerous things for you. God mm -hmm. said, okay, go down and minister to him. Meaning that he caught God's attention because God was looking and he could not see through. He was wondering, what is this structure that is in front of me? They said, that's Cornelius on earth. Wow. Somebody didn't get that. <laughs> Whatever you're doing on earth, you are laying bricks wow. in heaven. You are constructing something in heaven. Mm, my God. You are constructing something in heaven. Wow. This is why it is important to do anything that you can do, whether it's serving in a ministry, uh, doing whatever you can do that will win people to Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
not just doing good, but doing things that will bring people to Jesus matters a lot Amen. before God. Do things that matter. Live holy before God. Be righteous before God. Seek God. Be in the mind of God. Walk with God. Do things that actually present you properly before God. You must always understand, if you need a sign for something, it means that thing is not obvious. It means that that thing is going to be a mystery. And when it does happen, not when it, not if it happens, but when it does happen, a lot of people will be left behind. A lot of people will miss the last trumpet because it's not going to be obvious that the trumpet is about to sound. Now, there's a reason why I need to tell you this so that you have to understand your spiritual awareness is not just dependent on your prayer life. It is also dependent on your posture. You need not only to be aware of spiritual things, you need to be aware of physical things. Because certain spiritual signs, especially if they are going to affect the physical world, it means the sign for it will not be in the spirit, it will be in the physical. Even though it is a spiritual thing, it's supposed to affect the physical. So the sign of it will be physical. An example is this. Jesus is supposed to be born. But everyone who knows how to look at the stars can tell there is a bright star that just showed up that is unusual. Now we can't track the location, but nevertheless, we can all see something weird is happening in the heavens. Notice everyone that was looking to the sky missed the manger. The Lord Jesus was not in the sky. Neither was he the star <laughs> that was in the sky. It was simply a prophetic sign and a symbol for who was born on the earth. So sometimes trying to find things in the spirit may actually make you miss it because the sign may be in the physical. Because there are signs that happen in the spiritual world for spiritual reasons. And there are signs that happen in the physical world for physical reasons. Matthew 24 destruction of the temple mm -hmm. and Jesus went out and departed from the temple mm -hmm. and his disciples came to him for to shew him the buildings of the temple mm -hmm. and Jesus said unto them see you not all these things verily I say unto you there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down mm -hmm. and he sat upon the Mount of Olives the disciples came unto him privately saying tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming? Notice, the disciples asked him for two signs. Because Jesus is, they go to the temple, they are showing him the temple, Jesus is saying, listen, there is no, there is no stone that will be unturned. I mean, right now, if you look at Jerusalem, you look at the temple that what Jesus, our Lord said, happened. There was no stone unturned. Now, notice the disciples asked him for two signs. Tell us when this thing shall happen, and what will be the sign of your coming? They did not ask him for the end of the world. They asked him, when will this happen and what will be the sign of your coming? Because it troubled them. When they looked at the temple, they didn't imagine anything happening to the temple. What will be the sign of your coming? And what will precede this destruction of this temple? Keep reading. And the end of the world. And then they said, end the end of the world. So notice there are three things here. Destruction of the temple has already happened. The sign of his coming and then the end of the world. Now, why am I telling you to stop there? You need to understand that if you don't understand context, you may be looking for the wrong thing. You may miss it even though you are a believer. Because if Jesus could come to his own and his own did not recognize him, it means that when he is coming, he will still not be recognized. He will not be obvious. Now you remember, this God is telling you, when I do come to get you guys, I will come like a thief. A thief doesn't announce his coming. Now, uh, keep reading. Verse number four. Mm -hmm. And Jesus answered and said unto them, mm -hmm. Take heed that no man deceive you. Mm -hmm. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Now notice this. Now people have misread this. This verse has been misread because they think, they think Jesus is talking about somebody in the church. No, 
Jesus is saying, many will come in my name and they will tell you that I am the Christ. Notice he did not say they will come saying they are Jesus. You have to pay attention in order to understand what God is saying. He did not say they will come saying they are Jesus. He said they will come in my name, meaning that they will come as if they are representing me. But to mean they are the Christ, meaning that they will be the way to change the way things are. Because mm. remember, when the trouble starts, it will not affect the church first. It will affect everybody. So it means that this will be in the political arena. It will not be in the church arena. Because if somebody is saying, I will, I, they will come in my name say, no, I represent God. I'm a believer. I'm a Christian. Right. I'm a this, I'm a that, I'm a that. No, we, we have the way because of this and this and this. This is why it is very, very dangerous. It is very, very dangerous for a Christian to get emotionally involved with politics. Go deeper. It should be rational, never emotional. You see, when the whole um, election stuff was going on, the problem is many missed God because they got emotional about it. They were not rational about it. They got emotional about it. The truth is in politics, you pick the lesser evil. They are all bad. It doesn't matter what side they are on. They are all bad. They are politicians. They are terrible. This is their career. There are very few people that show up once in a while and those men usually die because they will not represent either sides. They will just want the good of the people and usually they end up as martyrs. They die. So Jesus is saying, many will come in my name and they will say, I am the Christ, meaning I am the anointed one of God for this season. Keep going. I'm going somewhere. Keep going. And shall deceive many. And he shall deceive many. Notice, deception is never for the church. Deception is for the world. Mm. People with the Holy Spirit cannot be deceived. They can have the wrong doctrine, but deception is not our portion. Amen. The elect cannot be deceived. Amen. Keep going. Verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Notice, you shall hear of wars and rumors of war. He did not say you will be in a war. He said you will hear of it. You will hear of it. You will hear of wars and rumors of them. Now, nobody ever makes a decision based on a rumor. Only an idiot would. I'm sorry if that offends you, but it's the truth. Nobody will ever make a life decision based on a rumor. If you do that, you need deliverance. Serious one. You will hear of it, not you will see it. It will be like, eh, they may be fighting or whatever, whatever, whatever. Rumors of war and wars, you will hear of them. Keep going. See that you are not, see that you be not troubled. Notice, see that you are not troubled. Uh -huh, keep going. For all these things must come to pass. Jesus but is saying, when you hear these things, don't be shaken, relax. These things are supposed to happen. Meaning a rumor should never get you to panic. What is happening in other places should never get you to panic because the moment you get emotionally involved and you panic, you might miss the trumpet because your focus will be somewhere else where it doesn't need to be. I'm coming to what I really want to say. Keep going. But the end is not yet. He said, but the end is not yet. I don't think you heard that. Jesus said, when you hear these things, don't be troubled. Don't let it shake you up. Relax. The end is not yet. So when people are telling you the end is coming, just know it means the end is not here. If anybody tells you, man, the end of the world is coming, 666 about to... <laughs> just understand. People who don't even pray, first of all, just know the end is far. It is the beginning of the end, but it's not the end. Because you see, as children of God, the reason why I'm teaching you this, and I'm still coming to where I want to go, is we were never called to operate in fear. See, the problem is we should be excited about the coming of the Lord. We shouldn't be in fear of the coming of the Lord. Amen. Issue that is that anything that puts you in fear is not of God. I don't think you heard what I'm saying. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. If your mind is not sound, you do not have love. It means you have not been perfected in love. The end should be an exciting outlook for us because it is the liberation, not only of us, but of the whole human race. So it is not something that should have us in fear. Anything that will put you in fear is not from him. 
I don't know if you're catching me so far. So when people tell you, ah, you need to repent, the end is coming. Jesus even said, go into all the world, preach the gospel. Tell them the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He did not say the end is at hand. And people read that wrong because people are not educated. Jesus was talking about the appointment, the anointing, the power of God that will allow us to function in these last days. He wasn't talking about the end of the world. When he prayed for his disciples, he told them, he, he said, Father, I'm not praying for them so that you can take them out of this world. Because the way the disciples heard Jesus, if you misunderstood what Jesus was saying, they thought Jesus is coming in their, life, in their day. They really thought that you'd have, they would have, man, before we go, Jesus is back. Because you have to remember, in their time was a time of great tribulation for the church. They were being killed. Romans were on them. There were battles and things going on. It was not a good time. You imagine the people who lived during the time of Hitler. The world was. They would have told you, man, if Jesus is not coming in an hour, this guy is surely the end. Listen, the end is here. But notice, why is everyone missing it? It is because people are not paying attention to what Jesus said. When COVID showed up, everyone was like, yep, the end is here. Verse 7. For nations shall rise against nation. Nations shall rise against nation. Now, from the beginning of the world, nations has been rising against nation. <laughs> Nothing new under the sun. Amen. Keep going. And kingdom against kingdom. Kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines. And there, shall, there shall be famines and pestilences, mm. and earthquakes mm -hmm. in diverse places. All those things have happened. Keep going. All these are the beginning of sorrows. These are the beginnings of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and mm -hmm. shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. That's already happened. Keep going. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, mm -hmm. and shall deceive many. Mm -hmm. And because iniquity shall abound, mm -hmm. the love of many shall wax cold. Notice, Jesus is describing things that have already happened. I'm going to tell you the biggest sign that everyone is missing. That's why a lot of people will miss the rapture. Keep going. Verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, mm -hmm. the same shall be saved. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, he that shall endure. He's not saying that, he's not only talking about perseverance, he's talking about those who stay calm to watch everything. They will make it keep going, watch this. Verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom mm -hmm. shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Notice, all those things will happen, but the world will still be functioning in a way because the gospel is still being preached. It means not everyone will be delivered. Some people will be delivered. You go in other parts of the world, it's not really free to be a believer. If you notice in America right now, to be a Christian is not very cool. Facts. You know, you're an extremist if you are. So there's weird things that are happening, but Jesus is saying the gospel will be preached still. After all that chaotic stuff, the gospel will still go into all the world. Keep going. And then shall the end come. And then shall the end come. Okay, now keep going. Verse 15, mm -hmm. when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation mm -hmm. spoken of by Daniel the prophet, uh -huh. stand in the holy place, uh -huh. whoso readeth, let him understand. Now notice what Jesus went, he went into now the end time. So when the gospel is preached and then you see the desolation, he's talking about the Antichrist going into the temple and it's rebuilt and all that. I want you to go to verse 27, I believe. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Verse 27. Mm -hmm. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, mm -hmm. and shineth even unto the west, mm -hmm. so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Because we want to focus on the rapture. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. But I want you to pick something. Keep going. Verse 28. Mm -hmm. For whosoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Mm -hmm. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, mm -hmm. and the moon shall not give her light, mm -hmm. and the stars shall fall from heaven, mm -hmm. and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Mm -hmm. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Mm -hmm. And then all the tribes of the earth mourn, mm -hmm. and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Mm -hmm. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, mm -hmm. and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from mm -hmm. one end of heaven to the other. Mm -hmm. Now learn 
a parable of the fig tree. Mm -hmm. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, mm -hmm. ye know that summer is nigh. Mm -hmm. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. He said, when you see these things, know that it is near. But what is the main sign? Keep going. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till mm -hmm. all these things be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Heaven and earth shall not pass away, mm -hmm. but my word shall not pass away. Mm -hmm. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, mm -hmm. no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Mm -hmm. But as the days of no word... Okay, notice now Jesus is giving you the day that the rapture will actually happen. Because he gave you signs that will lead to that day. But remember, he's not telling you how many months, he's just telling you signs that will lead to that day. Then right. Jesus said, of the day and the hour, nobody knows. Actually, he knows because he's telling you when it will happen. So he's giving you all the signs and then he's telling you, actually, of the day itself, uh, nobody knows. But I'll give you one clue that you need to look out for. Read it again. <laughs> Verse 37. As the days of no were, uh -huh. so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Uh -huh. For as in the days that were before the flood, they mm -hmm. were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage mm -hmm. until the day that Noah entered the ark mm -hmm. and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Mm -hmm. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. The greatest sign that the day is actually now is when people forget, when life goes back to normal. You need to be very afraid. So everyone is always talking about wars and this and this and this. You have to remember, when Noah was telling people, a flood is coming, nobody had ever seen rain. Mm. People were partying, people were having a regular life, people were marrying, people were having children. Life was normal. There was actually no chaos, meaning that there will be a lot of chaos and then chaos will silence. There will be some sort of peace. Mm -hmm. There will be some sort of peace because you have to remember that if a thief wants to come and get you he cannot come when you're on high alert so if there are signs if there are signs that are telling you you're coming you'll be on guard the goal is to come like a thief mm. so how can he come as a thief come on when you are on high alert jesus doesn't want you on high alert come on he wants you to forget Aye. let me tell you what you're being conditioned for oh many think you're being conditioned for war many of you think you're being conditioned for for famines you're being con these things have been happening on the planet they will continue to happen let me tell you what you're being conditioned for world war one happened world war two happened world war three will happen things will happen but the world will always go back so the goal will be like, ah, these things happen, but as human beings, we always make it through and life comes back to normal. So you'll be conditioned that things get back and then they get back good. Oh my God. If you look at right now, you are living in a time whereby a lot of uh, solutions are being created. If you know, the earth is actually overpopulated. So the only way to sustain human beings right now is to pump chemicals into animals and things in order to produce enough food to feed everyone so that solves the famine issue because if everyone else adapts this it means that the food thing will not be a problem anymore how can it be are you getting what i'm saying they're doing it with fishing they're doing it with different things they're doing it with other, you know the cloning the all these things are being already done are you hearing what i'm saying Many of you will look for negative things to see that the end is coming. But there's a time those negative things will not even... Remember, rumors of war, it means it won't be happening to you. You'll be put in a condition of sleeping. The sign is not the war, even though it is, but it's not really. Because wars have been happening. When people are shouting to you, repent! The end is not coming yet. So as a child of God, you need to start observing because... Every time the trumpet, do you know, you, oh, all right, the Bible says when the last trumpet will sound, the question you need to ask yourself, how many trumpets sounded and why didn't people hear it? Because the Bible is talking about the last trumpet and the last trumpet will be of the rapture, that all his people will be caught up. And then after that, there will be the great war and God will wipe everything clean. 
But there is one more trumpet. Now you need to ask yourself, why did every generation miss a trumpet? Whenever God sends somebody that will point people to his coming, there is always a sense of comfort in the flesh. If you look up throughout scripture, before the flood, you have to understand the flood that fell in the time of Noah was actually an angel pouring the wrath of God on the earth. Whenever an act of God is about to happen on earth, there is a trumpet that announces it. Noah heard it. That's why the Bible says Noah found favor in the sight of God. And Noah caught the warning and he caught how he needed to position himself when everyone else was not positioning themselves. Comfort will make you miss the rapture. Comfort will make you miss God. See, it is human nature to forget. This is why whenever the enemy wants to attack you and destroy your life, it is attacks make you pray. Troubles make you close to God. The moment you get any kind of peace, many forget to pray until trouble overtakes them. Satan being aware of this, it means that whenever there is trouble, draw close to God. Children of Israel were praying a lot when they were in bondage. When Moses was sent to set them free, it was at that very moment that they started creating other gods. When they were in Egypt, they wanted the God that can free them. When they got to the wilderness, they wanted to make a God they can control and make rules. So the danger is always in the comfort, not in the trouble. So your biggest danger is the lack of trouble. This is why it is important to understand scripture and God says, in Psalms it says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. If you look at your life, when you were in the world, you had less attacks. The moment you became a Christian is when every trouble you can ever think of started showing up. You could have money easily, you get saved, every job is denying you. When you are in the world, you never missed a way to pay rent. The moment you are with Jesus, you can't afford rent. When you are in the world, you had a support system. The moment you come to Christ, the whole world rejects you. You are like, wait, 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 what is going on? And Jesus tells you something funny, he says, the peace I give, the world can't give you. So many have confused peace for comfort because peace keeps you in times of trouble. When you have comfort, you don't need peace because there's nothing to panic about. In the time of Solomon, Solomon said this, he says, the Lord has given me peace to all my enemies. Notice, his peace meant there was no more fighting. Not that these people didn't like, they still didn't like him. They could not initiate war with him. So God gave him peace with everyone around him. God just gave him peace. And nobody could find a reason to fight him, so they just kind of left him alone. He understood it was the Lord's doing. i tell you something. Some of you need to take time. Examine. Am I enjoying comfort or am I enjoying peace? To ask yourself that. Because that will tell you the truth. Am I in danger of missing God? Am I at peace because I know he has me in his hands? Thief doesn't announce. Thief won't give you a sign. Thief will not alert you. Thief will not prepare you. Thief will not inform you. This is the same way when God wants to bless you. Many have missed their blessing because of comfort. Lord, I have been praying for, 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 for promotion. Lord, I've been praying for this. Father, I desire this. Father, I desire that. Okay, am I comfortable? Am I enjoying peace and joy? Peace can be only known when there's a time of chaos around you. Joy can be known only when there is nothing to be happy about. This is why you'll see the world always seeking happiness. Whenever they don't find happiness, they leave something and go after another thing because they're looking to be happy. I haven't been happy, I just want to feel happy, I just want to be happy. I just. But life's nature, for us who are in Christ, discomfort of this world make us eager for heaven discomfort of this world pains of this world confusions of this world 
restlessness of this world makes us look to heaven more because we have seen the true colors this world the temptations of the Lord Jesus what I'll give you everything mm-hmm. you have to do all that why do you need to go on the cross you don't need the cross I'll just give you the whole world look at all these kingdoms look at all this ocean I will hand it over to you what you have to do is bow to me here no one else can see this no one else is involved no one else is aware you need to worry about that what are you worried about it's the only way Satan gets you is to give you comfort we who know truth of this world we who understand realities of this world you know people are walking on thorns Paul says thorns and thistles shall the ground produce as a child of God we know that if things are working out is for us to secure the time and to do things that God wants us to do because for this earth anyone who works on this earth thorns and thistles are your portion because the ground is cursed cursed is the ground for thy sake from the sweat of thy brow shall you eat of it people who will listen to Jesus and all they want is bread you see Jesus was preaching he fed 5000 people he knew they would love him for the bread but he didn't want them to love him for bread so he left where they were because when he fed them point of feeding them was so that they remain and receive the word but when he fed them they stopped listening so when Jesus left them they didn't even know that Jesus had left so they started looking for Jesus looking for the Lord looking for the Lord and then they found him on the other side they said Lord where are you Jesus said listen you guys didn't look for me because of what I'm preaching you're looking for me because of bread the bread that I desire to give you you don't want to eat it said so then show us a sign I just multiplied bread and fed you it was not enough of a sign I fed you where there was nowhere to get shops to buy anything I fed you knowing very well there is no provision where we are there is no provision to get food but you're still asking me for a sign unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood they said this guy has a demon when he was feeding them he had no demon when he was saying what they wanted he had no demon the moment he started speaking about spiritual things they turned how do i know i'm in a church that are putting me to sleep because the truth is some churches are asleep i'm sorry to say teaching sin is good but it's not the gospel that is not what will prepare people for the end it is good there are people who need to hear the message of repentance but the repentance message is not really for the church is for the world because every word for you see the problem is this this is the thing about let me explain something to you quickly guys is a prophet let me just give you this in short so that this will help you is a prophet if you look in Deuteronomy if you look in Exodus actually let's let's focus on Deuteronomy lord is speaking to his people Hmm. The Lord is speaking to his people. And the Lord says this, I don't want you guys go and inquire of those who have familiar spirits. I will give you my prophets can inquire of them. So the purpose of a prophet primarily is to inquire of the Lord, what is God's mind? what is god's mind if you're a man if you're a woman who says you are a prophet or a prophetess and, and you are appointed and anointed by god but nobody can inquire of the lord from you you are not a prophet i am sorry you may be prophetic where god gives you some dreams and things like that but if a random person comes to you and says What is the Lord saying concerning my life concerning the next phase of my life if you cannot inquire of the Lord on their behalf give them an answer you are not a prophet because the point of a prophet is to make sure you do not go 
to sorcerers and to wizards find direction because they will lead you away from God don't go and inquire from from a prophet starts talking about your secret sin no Deuteronomy 18 and 10 uh -huh. there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter pass through the fire mm -hmm. or that uses divination or an observer of times or an enchanter mm -hmm. or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits mm -hmm. or a wizard or a necromancer mm -hmm. for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord mm -hmm. and because of these abominations the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee mm -hmm. thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God mm -hmm. for these nations which thou shalt possess hearken unto observers of times and unto diviners mm -hmm. but as for thee the Lord thy God hath suffered thee not to do so. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee and of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken, mm -hmm. according to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord no, my notice God. Notice he said, Whatsoever you desire of the Lord. The issue is this. Here is now the problem. If no one can inquire of the Lord from you, I'm sorry to tell you, you may be prophetic, but you're not a prophet. A prophet will preach. His duty is not to preach because God already has teachers, has pastors, has evangelists, has apostles. He doesn't need another person to preach. Even though we are all called to preach, the goal of a prophet is for you to inquire the Lord. Main objective. So when you see who are telling you you need to go back to repentance which is a good message it's not a bad message that is not the message of a prophet a prophet because his duty was for the nation to inquire from him and for him to lead their nation it was also his responsibility to tell the nation if they are going off track inquired of the Lord and he said this is how you guys are supposed to walk right now you guys are not walking on that path you need to repent remember repent means change your mind go back to the correct way is this making sense so far is this making sense so far a lot will be asleep because in this end times need the maturity of the spirit not repentance because true repentance comes every time you hear the word of god your mind changes the problem is that those who are not prophetic and are trying to be prophets they think to repent is to turn from sins only oh repentance is consistent adjustment of your mind in the way you observe and look at god that's what repenting is. Repenting has nothing to actually do with only sin. It has to do with your old ways. Change the way you think and approach things differently. Abandon the old way of doing things and do things this way. Because anything that is not of faith is sin. Sin is not only stealing and killing because that's what these guys think it is. Thing that lacks faith, meaning I am doing it out of fear. I am doing it to impress God. I am doing it to try to secure my place in God, it is not of faith, it is of fear that makes it sin. I don't know if you heard what I said. Anything that is not of faith is sin. When you don't understand that there are sins that people are committing unconsciously, and those are the ones that actually keep you from God, because a sin I know I can fix, sin I don't know I can't fix. So there's a lot of people who are saying, hey, you know, I live right. But when God looks at you, your life has no faith. You only deal with demons. You don't believe in the blessing of God. You don't believe in the security of God. You don't believe in the things that God can do, meet you, change you, speak to you. It is sin. Because it is not of faith. It may not be enough for you to be disconnected from God, but it will be definitely be enough to stop you from growing in God. Because how will you grow in grace if you have no faith? So those who their only message sorry to tell you now look at this and and i'm sorry to say this let me give you this comparison real quick you notice churches that focus on this is sin that is sin this is sin that is sin manifestation of god is never there yes. have you ever noticed that yes. say righteousness holiness church 
truth is the only way. There is no way to holiness. Jesus is the only way to holiness. Because holiness has nothing to do with sin. Righteousness has to do with sin. When we say God is holy, God become holy. Is it his nature to just be holy? Or did he have to do something to be holy? Church thinks that to be holy you have to do something. No. The Lord said you are a holy nation, a royal priesthood. Meaning holiness is a declaration from God. It's something bestowed on you. It's not something you earn. Even righteousness in the, itself is a gift. You don't work for any of these things. It has to do with faith. You believe on the Lord Jesus, you become righteous. And when you receive Jesus, Jesus is the way to holiness. Is this making sense so far? If you are in a place, all you hear about is sin. That is bad. This is bad. That is bad. This is bad. This is bad. This is bad. Don't listen to that one. Don't listen to this one. This is bad. Be in your word. All these things sound good. Remember, you know that something is not from God. How do we know something is not from God? The Bible says this, form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. I have nothing wrong with people preaching sin, but preach the whole truth. The truth of sin is that you have been saved by grace. No one can stop sinning without the power of the Holy Spirit. Nobody can escape or mature or be released from sin without committing yourself to Jesus. It is not something you can stop. It is only something that God can do. Because if you can fix it, then why did Jesus die? It makes the cross of no avail. It makes the cross useless. It sounds good to say, don't steal, don't sin, don't do this, don't do that. It sounds good. But it can lower you to sleep because you'll be using your own righteousness. You'll never grow in his righteousness. When the trumpet sounds for such a person, that person will miss it because all their walk with God is based on what they can do, not what God has done. So they won't be able to grow because all their growth is dependent on what they do, not on what the Holy Spirit can do in you, not what the Holy Spirit can do through you not what the righteousness of Jesus can deliver you and bring you from. Now you're in danger because you're thinking you're doing right. The whole time God is looking at you, he's waiting for you to put off filthy rags, put on the right garment that is his son Jesus. Self-righteousness is poison. Self-righteousness is poison. Time. But the problem is the world likes to look at something that appears godly, but they don't know what is of God. Just because something appears godly doesn't mean it is of God. Facts. I'll say that one more time. Something appearing godly doesn't make it of God. When you saw John the Baptist, you thought he was a wizard. He didn't look right. He looked crazy. That's the truth. He was a wild man. Bushman. Those who had spiritual eyes knew mm, God is with this guy. When you looked at Samson, based on even the reputation of the church, People don't understand that the hand of God was heavily on Samson. If you look at everyone talking about Samson today, they just make him this guy that was lasting and doing all these crazy things. But if you read in scripture, the Bible tells you, always see people saying Samson was a womanizer. Guys, read the Bible. That's not what it says about Samson. He had one wife. He had one wife and the, the wife died and he tried to get another situation and through that situation, everything else happened. <laughs> Is, is, is this, are you guys getting what I'm saying? But all this is because whatever we can control, it is easy to make God in our image. If we make him in our image, we can follow him. We allow God to be God. It is too brilliant. It is too good. Too good for us to just leave everything and just follow him the way he wants to be followed. This is why many will miss him. Walk in righteousness requires faith. It doesn't require action. It requires faith. Say that one more time. To walk in righteousness requires faith. In the Lord Jesus, into righteousness. Not your actions, your faith in him. That no matter what action I ever perform, no matter how much I abstain from sin, I am a sinner already. It's in my DNA. But believing on him, he's the only one the Father has accepted. Amen. And when I receive him, he no longer sees me, he sees him. Yes. I am converted, I am cleansed and purified because of his sacrifice. Yes. It's the repentance people should be preaching. Yes. People will preach that, guess what? 
self-righteousness will die. The trumpet sounds, you'll be spiritual enough to hear it because it will be spiritual sound. It won't be a physical one. It will take you to develop spiritually to hear it. You have not cultivated your inner man. Your inner man is not adorned. Your inner man is not built up. If your inner man is not cultivated, I am sorry guys, I'll be sensitive to him. Remember, every time Jesus came, nobody noticed him. It's easier to discern the presence of the Holy Spirit. It is easier to discern the presence of the Father. It is very difficult to discern the presence of the Son. It's very difficult. Very difficult. Very difficult. It's not an easy thing. Think about it. The Lord is saying, let me just, let me, let me, let me simplify this. The Lord is saying, good to strangers. Some of you have been good to angels unawares. It means that an angel, when he takes the form of a man, to be extremely spiritually sensitive to pick up that this is an angel, this is not a human being. It means you won't feel it. You will only know it if you are spiritual. If you are so deep with the Lord, you will know it. It tells you if God comes in your form, you won't know him. So, I don't know how many times in service, sometimes I'll be preaching now, look out, see you know who you are and usually you'll see them and you won't see them again if they show up they always show up sometimes they'll come as a regular person and sit in church but when they leave nobody ever sees them leaving can I have you don't see them sometimes when we have had needs in the church they'll show up and give like a human being and leave interesting how angels behave the question you need to ask yourself is this am I at peace am I in my comfort zone has the devil made me comfortable? When God moves, the Lord chooses to touch me. I will not miss the sound. I had to abandon fear. Alert. You don't need to be afraid to be alert. This is why it's very important to focus growth in God. Growth in God is something we cannot avoid. It has to be a lifestyle. I am not growing every day. There are chances that I can miss God. And this is not just talking about the rapture, just in your daily life. God tried to speak to me and I missed it. The Lord tried to lead me and I missed it. I'm growing every day. I minimize the chances of missing God. I'm consistently improving my spiritual life. Take count of spiritual life. If you grow, it's a serious question. Take account spiritual life which have you grown have a weekly goal daily you're working towards it that then the end of the week you say okay after seven days did I see improvement in this area did I feel closer with God in this area did I become more knowledgeable in this area did I draw closer to God in this area monthly goal yearly growth goal father by the end of this year this is where I want to be Elijah could have encounters I want to be be in the realm of visions or visions of the night. I'm going to work towards this. Nothing wrong with that. Look at the apostles. You can see spiritual growth right before your eyes. Zero discernment to discernment to walking in power to walking in supernatural power. The embodiment of God's hand upon the earth point their shadows are healing people you can see the consistent growth in revelation in understanding consistent growth did you grow so that you don't miss him with the high priest anointed high priest that year Fesai, able to see Jesus and know that this is the son of God gift doesn't mean you're discerning I'm gonna pray second I want you to really assess yourself. Where am I or where do I want to go? If your Christian life is centered on, I just want a house, I just want to be married, I want children, I want this, I want that. It's good. It's not the goal. You're going to sustain those things if you have a spirit that is weak. You keep those things if you're not standing tall with the Lord. You manage. How will you survive? 
to get to a place that those things are good, but Jesus, I'd rather have you than any of those things. If I have you, you're enough. I'd rather be on the floor with Jesus than be on the bed without him. I'd rather be homeless with Jesus than be in my mansion going to hell. See, that will not happen until you start growing spiritually. Because when you grow spiritually, naturally, decide to leave the world. The world comes out of you. It's a normal reaction. See, many of these things people are trying to do. That's why you are struggling. They should be just natural. They should just be the natural course of things. That's, that's just how it goes down. Natural. Hang out with God enough, you start hearing His voice. It just happens. Hang out with God enough, you just receive power from Him. Something that happens naturally. Something that you even have to force. That's why when people, I just want to prophesy, it's good. But don't you get God has to talk? You can't prophesy without him talking. So you are in a better position to be close enough where you can speak with him. That's the point of it. Because if I give you tools, this is what you do, this is what you do, then he doesn't want to talk to you, then what? He has to talk for you to hear. You can't cook up prophecy. I'm going to give you things to do. Three kinds of prayer. Pray every day. These prayers will cover you beyond what you have the ability to do. First prayer, first prayer, Father, draw me to yourself. This is requesting God pull you closer to him even when you have no ability to come close to him. The disciples did not control their growth. It is the Lord Jesus who determined their growth, the one that pushed them into their growth. Their spiritual life didn't get them to the apostleship. It all happened because God called them unto himself and he consistently drew them closer unto himself. That I am available, that I am weak, that I am incapable. But Lord, consistently draw me unto yourself that I may grow, become all you want me to be. This is not something I can accomplish by my own strength. It is an act of grace. Lord, draw me to yourself. Draw me to your heart. Pull me close to you, beyond my capacity. You see, you are recognizing that prayer. It's only you who can do this, Lord. If you leave me, I try to do it my own self, I'll be like a Pharisee. If you bring me close, I will grow by the Spirit. All Jesus did was follow me, and they followed. That uh, After they followed me, everything was on him. So you have decided to follow him. But two, Father, give me the grace grow in grace. Lord God, give me the grace to grow in grace. This means unmerited favor. This means unmerited favor. What you're saying to God, Father, raise me up. Give me the ability. Give me the strength. Give me the wisdom. Continue to mature in territories that I have not earned. Because grace is a gift. Grace removes work. If God graced somebody with something, you know how to grow in grace. It means you take out 20 years of something that somebody took to get to that place and you can get it in an instant. Think about how many times Moses fasted. Think about how many times Moses sought God when he was on the mountain. And the day he was tired, God added 72 elders. <laughs> they got what took him months and years to grow in. They got it instantly. Think about Saul, who made Samuel. And Samuel gives him prophetic direction and, in, and direction and instruction. When he gets to the company of prophets, he is, the Bible says, and he was changed and prophesied. He was changed not because he did anything. He was changed because of where he was sent grace. Third one, Father, cause me to be sober in mind. Cause me to be sober. Don't allow me to fall in any kind of slumber. Don't allow me to be lowered into a fool's death. Don't allow me to be lowered into corruption. Don't allow me to fall into the enemy's devices or whatever the enemy may want. Father, give me the grace. Give me the ability. To be sober. When you are sober, you are alert. 
when you are sober you are aware not only of the move of the holy spirit but you are aware of the move of, of also the enemy if the enemy is planning something if if the enemy is trying to do something you are aware of it because you are sober are you hearing me if you can add this in your prayer to be very different be very very different it will cause you to be in places that God has called you to be in it will take you to those places father i pray in the name of your son jesus holy son only son father we are men and we have so many shortcomings to your faithfulness o oh lord remains with us forever your eyes are upon us your mighty hand has rested upon us that lord we will not miss your move ultimately to hear the last trumpet has nothing to do with what is happening around us it has more to do with us falling asleep being wise in the spirit to observe and understand that our peace and our comfort does not come from this world but it comes from you when the world is seeking happiness we seek for joy when the world is seeking comfort we seek peace because all that we are and what we will be is in your hands so father we are grateful father we are thankful that our spiritual life will consistently and continually be cultivated that your name will be glorified father we thank you that we will continue to grow that whatsoever is in our way to stop us from growing father by the power of the holy spirit let it be removed from our way my lord and my god exalt yourself lift yourself up even amongst us now in the name of your only son jesus christ amen